On today's episode, we are going to cover how to properly sex your crested gecko. Hello? No, 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 no. We are not talking about that kind of sexing. You pervert. Could you just uh, do me a favor and just load my intro, please? Thank you. Okay, so hopping right on into it. There is no real way to distinguish between male and female when you take a look at the, for instance, the size of the crest or the external pattern or color on adults. Uh, what we'll be doing here is we'll be taking a look at both male and female in the adult stage and that we can easily find a couple of ways to distinguish between the two. In males, they have what's called a hemipenal bulge. It is located in the grunnel area just below the vent and just above where the tail or tail nub would begin if your crested gecko is tailless. It houses two separate hemipenes. Uh, these are penis-like appendages which are used for copulation. This male. It's a penis. <laughs> there is one hemipene that is released during copulation. They can alternate between the two. Also another way to distinguish between the sexes is there is a set of about two to three scale rows that on each and every individual scale is what are called pre-anal pores. These are very similar in look to the pores that are on your face and some of my fellow peoples who have had issues with severe acne in the past, you can probably easily identify what these might look like. <laughs> ah, my face is good. My beautiful, beautiful face. If you especially have handled a female not too long prior to handling your male, they may try to um, sing the song of love to your hands. Yeah, um, and I mean, this is not too uncommon. You can find a lot of sexually mature males might do this, especially if you've handled even just another male. It just kind of depends, but yeah, that's one behavior you might see with a particularly charged male. Uh, now in females, you'll notice at that same area, there will be no bulge located under the vent and just above the tail. It's going to be relatively flat, especially when viewed from the side, from the upper thigh up into the tail region. There's not going to be any sort of pronunciation. There may be a little fatty deposit there, but that's pretty much going to be all in uh, that department for your female. They will also contain no preanal pores in that area above the vent. Now, some females do get what are called pseudopores, and they do look kind of similar to what males may have, but it's not too crazy common. It does happen, and it can be quite confusing if they you get into later adulthood and all of a sudden they're laying eggs and you thought you had a male. Now that does happen, but again, it's not too common. They also do not get excited if you've handled other geckos for the most part, unless they are displaying a territorial response to smelling another gecko that's been nearby or if you've handled them. I know what you're thinking now is that if you've got a juvenile or a baby crested gecko, well, Drea, that's all good and well, but I've got a little one here. You know, what do I do about them? I can't tell Jack spit on what's going on down there. That's okay. We're going to cover a couple of different ways that we can at least get an idea of what we might be looking at, especially if you plan on either going to a breeder's place of business or if you are going to a show. Going into the don'ts category, the number one thing that I'm going to suggest that you as a new owner of your Crested Gecko not do, you've already got your gecko, you've had it settling in for a few weeks, and now you're ready to find out, you know, what is what is my gecko? I don't I don't really know what, what to go from here because I don't see a bulge, it's just too small, I can't see pores with the naked eye. And that's understandable. But one thing I'm going to beg you, and I'm I'm begging, I'm begging here. I'm literally on my knees begging. Do not become a member of the Blurry Butts Paparazzi. What is that, do you ask? So you've got your gecko. You want to know what it is. Now you grab your cell phone and you display its crotch for the world to see. You snap a picture and you post it to Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. The whole 
the whole purpose for me being so adamant about you not doing this is you don't just have reputable breeders online on those platforms. You've got people who they may have owned a gecko for three to six months, maybe a year. That doesn't make them experts. So they may, ha that picture may slightly show some pores and they're spitting out female. If you've got a five to 12 gram animal, you know, they can't, they can't definitively say what sex that animal is. So if they're shouting out male, if they're shouting out female, that, that's not the correct way to do this. You can see pores on an animal between, I, I, I've seen them as young as maybe three to four grams, and I haven't seen them up to as late as about 15 grams. It just kind of depends on every individual animal. No two animals will age at the exact same rate. So you're asking not just people to take into consideration what kind of mobile device you're using and the quality of the camera, but also what the platform does to alter that image to get it on to the platform itself. Uh, you're also asking them to take into consideration the quality of their screen and their longevity of being in the Crested Gecko industry, and sometimes that's just not reliable. Your best bet is to do the work yourself, and I'm going to go into that here in just a little bit. Another thing that I ask that you take into consideration is not to take the seller's word for it, especially if they're adamant. They pick up a gecko and they say, oh, this little five gram baby, that's definitely going to be a female. They are in a position where whether it's a pet shop, a breeder, or whether it is just little Timmy down the street who's just trying to rehome his animal. They're all in a position where they are trying to rehome this animal or they're wanting to make a little cash. Just make sure that you come prepared. Make sure that you bring uh, what's gonna lead into our dues section. And that is number one, buying a jeweler's loop. So why do we buy a jeweler's loop? Well, we discussed with the adults how they will have two to three rows of pre-anal pores, and that is also the case in juveniles. It just depends on what stage or weight that those pores are visible. You're also taking into consideration your vision or the quality of your loop. But when you go to a show, when you go to a breeder's place of business, you're gonna wanna ask for permission to handle the animal. And if they allow you to do so, go ahead and take your loop and I'll put a link in the description. They run between eight to 14 or $15. Some of them come with a little bitty light that will make it a little easier to see, but you'll place them either against a deli cup lid that's clear or a piece of glass. And then focus in on the pre-anal pore or the groin area and look for those pores. Now, if the gecko that you are looking at is between four to about 15 grams and you don't see those pores, it does not necessarily mean that that animal will not go male. It does not mean that that animal is necessarily female. It just means that it possibly could be female. If it has pores, it probably is a male. But again, you can't rule out anything in the juvenile stage until the hemipenal bulge develops or if that um, female, quote unquote, has either begun to lay eggs or is of to about, I would say 20 grams or so, and they still have no pronunciation of the bulge. Now, I do wanna take a moment to say that if a breeder, uh, whether that be at a show or at their place of business, chooses to not allow you to handle their animals so you can sex them, that is something that is completely within their right to do because it is their animal. Another thing that I do suggest is to buy a scale. It's important to monitor for the growth of your animal, as well as to check again if you've already got the animal on your person and you're, you know, you checked a couple of weeks ago, but you weren't for sure. So now the animal's got a couple of grams on it again, and you want to double check again. If you're looking to get into selling, it's going to be important to list the weight of the animal and whether or not you see pores with a loop. Now there is some lingo that if you're going to be selling your animal you want to kind of go with because you don't want to guarantee sex at a particular weight it's going to get you into trouble you might end up having to give discounts later on i've even seen readers guarantee a sex on an animal that later turned out to be the opposite so what i suggest is if your animal is a juvenile and you do see pre-anal pores you can list that animal as a probable male most of the time females are not going to have pores with the exception of pseudopores. It does happen. Again, it is rare, but it does happen. 
Um, so you want to list that animal as a probable male. Now, if I don't see pores, then I would want to list that animal as no pores visible or if you get to the stages of 15 grams and above, possible female. Well, hopefully this video gave you some more confidence when it comes to sexing your crusty and hopefully answered some questions as well that you may have had unanswered, whether that be on the platforms or on the forums. But thank you again so much for tuning in. Okay, everyone, did you like what you heard on our episode for today? Be sure to slide on down to the comments section and lick that like button as well. Don't forget to hit subscribe and visit us on over at Facebook and Instagrammy. We look forward to hearing from you from any and all of these platforms. And of course, we will be turning out more content as the days go by. So just give us some patience. We are still building at this time. But until then, my cold-blooded lovers, see ya.